Sarah Atherton. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And it's an honour to have been granted this adjournment debate on Wrexham's bid for the City of Culture 2025. Firstly, we are thrilled to be in the final four, with the title within touching distance. Bradford, Southampton and County Durham are good bids, and colleagues from across the House have put forward very convincing arguments. However, there is one key difference that sets Wrexham apart from the other three, and that difference is Wales. If Wrexham were to become the City of Culture 2025, it would be the first Welsh winner of the title since the inception of the competition. And as a proud unionist, as I know a few of us are on this side, um, a Welsh winner would highlight the commitment of this government to the union. And talking of firsts, Wrexham has had a few. I am the first Conservative female MP to be elected for Wales, and in 2019, uh, 2019 was the first ever time Wrexham turned blue. And we're going for a hat trick, Madam Deputy Speaker, by hoping Wrexham is named City of Culture, the first in Wales. Of course, one huge element of this bid is that we have the Welsh language as our trump card. And since many responsibilities are devolved in Wales to the Welsh Labour government in Cardiff, the City of Culture bid represents a unique opportunity for the whole of the UK to celebrate the individualism of Wales and its proud language and culture, whilst also celebrating its importance as part of our union. Now, Wrexham has a diverse population, with over 70 languages spoken, the largest being our Polish community, who recently mobilised to send aid to, U uh, to Ukraine, working with local businesses to facilitate nearly £2 million worth of donations. Working with each other for the betterment of Wrexham is what we do. Wrexham's culture bid has involved over 200 stakeholders, with 50 grants being uh, awarded to community organisations to participate, and we have held over 90 City of Culture events already. Now, Wrexham is a town built on brewing, football and mining. To take football, which is very topical right at this moment, Wrexham Athletic Football Club is on a high. And on Sunday, I will be cheering on the Reds at the FA Trophy final against Bromley at Wembley. And of course, we'll win, but of course, you would have to have your eye off the ball to have missed the fact that Wrexham Athletic Football Club is now owned by Hollywood actors Ryan Reynolds and Rob McElhenney. Uh, Wrexham has certainly been put on the map. Rob and Ryan were not MBFs just yet, but I'm working on it. Rob and Ryan know the importance. I beg to move this house to now adjourn. The question is this house to now adjourn. Sarah Atherton. <laughs> uh, Rob and Ryan, my MBFs nearly. Uh, they know the importance of football to Wrexham and want to nurture and champion that. And as the Minister knows from a visit a while back, the home of Wrexham Athletic Football Club uh, is the historical racecourse ground and is in some ways the headquarters of our town. The racecourse ground is the oldest international football ground in the world. And, has, uh, and it has been used to host international matches. When Wales hosted the Rugby World Cup in 1999, the Wrexham racecourse was filled with over 16,000 fans from around the world. International games have not been seen on that scale since, mainly because the capacity no longer allows this. And like everyone in Wrexham and the whole of North Wales, I am passionate about returning international sporting events to North Wales. The redevelopment of the historic COP stand, which I am campaigning for as part of Wrexham's levelling up fund bid, will allow for an extra 5,500 spectators, which will then permit the hosting of international sporting events. And Madam Deputy Speaker, if you'd like to sign our petition, please click on to change.org uh, for the redevelopment of the racecourse uh, stand to create a stadium for the North. All signatures welcome. 
Our aim is to make Wrexham the home of Welsh football. Hollywood investment, the arrival of the National Football Museum for Wales, commitment by the Welsh FA and the redevelopment of the cop stand, fingers crossed, mm -hmm. could all make this a reality. Another founding pillar of Wrexham is brewing. Wrexham Lager was founded in 1881 and is a staple of the town. It is steeped in fascinating history and as a former brewer myself, Wrexham Lager is not only close to my heart but my taste buds. The, brewing, uh, the brewery um, exemplifies Wrexham's business and trading prowess. It was one of the first interna international exports from Wrexham. Imported to the Americas in the 1800s, served as the only beer on the Titanic. It went down well. <laughs> and is a firm favourite of the Royal Navy. And that brings me nicely onto the significance of Wrexham's military history. A military town with a proud veteran community of which I am one. High Town Barracks was the home of the Royal Welsh Fusiliers dating back to 1689. And High Town Barracks was only to billet a residual military presence until last year when the MOD recognised Wrexham's military significance and returned a reserve unit of the Royal Welsh back to High Town Barracks under the future pro, uh, soldier programme. I am grateful to the Secretary of State for Defence, my right honourable uh, friend for Weir and Preston North, for affirming his uh, commitment to Wrexham and North Wales. On the final pillar of Wrexham, as I see it, I must mention the importance of mining to Wrexham. Wrexham was a proud mining town, which was rocked in 1934 by the Gresford Mining Disaster where 266 men lost their lives. And we are fiercely proud of our mining heritage and look forward to commemorate, uh, commemorating this further in the future. <coughs> and finally, I would like to touch on Wrexham's potential. Wrexham is brimming with talent, especially STEM expertise. Wockart UK won the UK government's contract to bottle the AstraZeneca vaccine at the start of the pandemic. Wrexham is hugely proud to have played a part in the whole of the UK vaccine programme. Uh, the vaccine was produced in England, bottled in Wales, trialled in Northern Ireland and rolled out in Scotland. And with a growing industrial estate due to ever increasing inward investment and soon to be the largest in the United Kingdom, Wrexham will be the envy of the world and be known for its STEM innovation, manufacturing and skills. And we are growing our own talent with Wrexham's Glendur University and Colleg Cambria, both in the town. And we have ever increasing number of job vacancies on offer. Furthering our homegrown talent, we have expanded our healthcare training in Wrexham. For example, our new nursing campus at the university and nursing cadet training at, at the college, all of whom train at our local hospital, the Wrexham Mailer where I trained as a nurse some decades ago and returned during the pandemic. In terms of art, music and tourism, Wrexham has a mass on offer. Only last week it was announced that Tipau had been shortlisted for Art Fund Museum of the Year and two weeks ago 15,000 people descended on Wrexham to enjoy the Focus Wales Music Festival which so showcased emerging Welsh talent. And crowds have always been attracted to our UNESCO heritage site, the Pontesachdi Viaduct, which recently received £13 million of UK government levelling up fund investment to ensure its future. And many more enjoy the Grand House of Erwig and Chirk Castle. In fact, of the seven wonders of Wales, three are in Wrexham. St Giles's Church dates back to the 15th century, the yew trees of Overton and the bells of Gresford Church, where I got married. And I would like to put on record my thanks to the UK Government for already committing in the Leveling Up Fund white paper to moving civil servant service jobs to Wrexham. With the CPS and HMP Berwyn nearby, I am pleased that the Ministry of Justice is setting up a hub and that is starting to develop. And to sum up, Madam Deputy Speaker, the benefits of Rex to Wrexham of being named City of Culture 2025 are endless. It would bring recognition to our beautiful town. Unmatched investment, something Wrexham has not seen for 20 years, and strengthen our union. 
and when I got elected in 2019, my goal was to put Wrexham on the map. Decades of labour neglect left Wrexham deflated. There will never be a better moment for Wrexham to be recognised, recognised as a hidden gem, brimming with history, pride, potential and passion. To me, the bid of City of Culture is not only about historical accolades or how many famous singers, architects or artists came from a place. It's about what Wrexham is achieving now and can achieve. It's about its people and its potential. And Wrexham has that in bucket loads. It just needs someone to unlock it. And this government has the key to do that. Wrexham, we rise together. Do you have a Nigel Hobson. Well, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. And I thank my honourable friend, the member for Wrexham, for securing this debate. And she is rightly championing Wrexham, as she always does, and is justly proud that the county borough was the only place in Wales, as she said, that was shortlisted in this fierce competition for the highly coveted UK City of Culture title. The title, previously held by Derry London Derry, Hull and currently Coventry, is a growing prize uh, and a record 20 places applied this year. This is the final debate secured for the four shortlisted places bidding for the 2025 title, and I would like to briefly reflect on the passion with which all honourable members spoke about their constituencies. They highlighted the incredible heritage and cultural assets of which people are proud across the whole of the United Kingdom. They spoke of the dedication of their bidding teams, the ambition for positive change, and their sheer number of partners that have come together to support their place. And while this is a competition, it is worth acknowledging the transformative power of culture in all places, not just the winners. And this is why the UK City of Culture programme is a key part of DTMS's efforts to level up opportunity right across the UK. It's a proven model for harnessing culture and creativity to attract investment and tourism to bring people together, drive economic growth, positive social change and regeneration. And the title is unique in its holistic nature. It galvanises partners across sectors to ensure systematic change, promotes social cohesion and well-being, and creates a shared vision with multiple outcomes. The competition was inspired by the success of Liverpool um, when we, it had the European Capital of Culture in two, 2008, and it was designed and is delivered by DCMS in collaboration with the devolved administrations. This government has recently announced that it will be a permanent quadrennial competition continuing in 2029 and beyond, and I'm delighted that some of the unsuccessful bidders in the current competition have already declared their intention to bid again for the 2029 title. Now, my right honourable friend, the Lord Parkinson of Whitley Bay, a Minister for Arts, has recently visited all of the shortlisted places, including, of course, Wrexham, and has been hugely impressed with the effort and ambition of bidding teams and partners. And as my honourable friend mentioned, I had the honour of visiting Wrexham myself not so long ago and had the opportunity to visit so many of the local cultural uh, establishments and sites that she mentioned. Now, the impact of the title is evident in the benefits felt by previous winners. More than £150 million of public and private sector investment was invested into the 2013 winner, Derry Londonderry, and the 2017 winner, Hull, saw 5.3 million people visiting more than 2,800 events. And Coventry, despite the huge challenges posed by the pandemic, has developed an extraordinary programme of events that have put culture at its heart and a part of the social and economic recovery. Co-created projects have taken place in all 18 wards in the city, with thousands of community dancers, musicians, poets and makers participating. And the city has seen more than £172 million invested in the likes of music concerts, public art displays, the new Telegraph Hotel, a new children's player in the city centre and improvements to public transport. And Coventry's year will culminate in Radio 1's big weekend at the end of May. It's no wonder, therefore, that there were more initial applications for the 2025 title than ever before. Wrexham County Borough, along with the three other locations, Bradford, County Durham and Southampton, was approved by the Secretary of State to make the shortlist for 2025. All the bids have been scrutinised by the Expert Advisory Panel, which is chaired by Sir Phil Redmond, and will be continuing to assess the finalists against criteria such as placemaking, levelling up, 
UK and international cooperation, opening up access to culture and creating a lasting legacy. And the panel has now visited the shortlist and will make their final recommendation to DCMS ministers following a presentation from each place this very week. And the winner will then be announced in Coventry later this month. Now, as my honourable friend um, has said so eloquently, Wrexham County is a proud and passionate region with substantial cultural assets. For one, it boasts a UNESCO World Heritage Site, the Pontisclid um, Aqueduct. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right, or close. It's the tallest aqueduct in the world. And the colour splash on the Bid Team logo represents coal dust as a tribute to Wrexham's industrial past, as my honourable friend mentioned. And while the colours used are to represent the vibrancy and diversity of everyone who lives, works and plays in Wrexham. Wrexham is indeed world-renowned for its textiles, bricks, beer, mining and much else. And, of course, is also home to the world's third oldest professional football team, AFC Wrexham. And the club's recent takeover has attracted immense international interest and support. Now, unfortunately, Madam Deputy Speaker, I uh, last visited Wrexham just before the acquisition of Wrexham Football Club by Hollywood stars Ryan Reynolds, uh, Ryan Reynolds and Rob um, McElhenney, and therefore also missed out on the opportunity to visit the emerging major tourist attraction that is the urinal in the gents' toilets, which was a gift. Um, to, uh, to, to Rob uh, on his birthday from Ryan Reynolds, and I'm sure and confident that this major cultural uh, attraction will form the centrepiece of the 2025 City of Culture bid, um, or, or maybe not. But uh, they gave me the opportunity to talk about urinals in the Chamber of the House of Commons, Madam Deputy Speaker, so I took that opportunity. Um, now, of course, Red Wrexham is a place of, uh, of myth and legend. Um, it's a place filled with music and homegrown talent, and I know that Focus Wales, one of the UK's leading music showcase festivals, welcomes over 15,000 international artists, industry leaders and music fans from across the world to, to the county every single year. And Wrexham's UK City of Culture bid is led by the County Council alongside partners from local businesses to National Trust Wales and Transport for Wales. Wrexham's vision for 2025 includes celebrating the region's cultural diversity and becoming the UK capital of play. And I'm told that on the panel's visit to Wrexham, the chair, Sir Philip Redmond, was persuaded by young people to even take a turn on a zip wire. Now, the bid also aims to establish Wrexham as the home of football in Wales, the North Wales Centre um, for Trade and Events, leaders in innovation and to promote, to promote the Welsh language and heritage. Wrexham's bid celebrates local and national heritage. As part of the bid process, the Borough Council awarded over 50 grants of up to £1,000 to individuals and organisations to host a multitude of events and projects to, to promote the county. And planned activities include the recreation of the historic Wrexham Taylor's Quilt, a power chair football event to highlight Wrexham's inclusive environment for disability sports, and a special fusion event with African and Welsh food, fashion and music. Now, as outlined in their website, the team also aims to establish a permanent, long-lasting legacy of socio-economic benefits beyond their 2025 year, improving health and well-being and educational outcomes. And as the only Welsh region in the competition, the team anticipates that should the bid be successful, it would have a positive impact on neighbouring regions such as uh, Denbyshire, Flintshire and Powys, and more broadly across Wales. And in Wrexham itself, regeneration of infrastructure and the discussed public spaces is a priority. Now, as the competition goes from strength to strength, for the first time, the eight long-listed places from across the UK received a £40,000 grant each to support their application ahead of the shortlisting stage. And this was intended to level the playing field, reduce the burden on the bidders and help them to develop scalable plans. And I would like to th take this opportunity to thank all bidding places for participating in this competition. As I alluded to earlier, there are clear benefits to all places that bid. This was evident from the visits that have recently taken place to all the shortlisted places. The bidding process engages and galvanises a wide range of local communities and organisations, resulting in enduring partnerships and pride in place, and the process encourages places to develop a vision and come together around ambitions for change, and it also attracts media attention, putting places on the map. 
For example, Hull was unsuccessful in winning the 2013 title, but came back to win the 2017 title. Sunderland, who bid for the 2021 title, created the momentum to form a new arts trust, Sunderland Culture, and this achieved enhanced Arts Culture England funding and mobilised a lasting team of, of community volunteers. Paisley bid in the 2021 title and has since raised funds for its museum and hosted a range of major events, including Unboxed About Us. And Norwich, bid in the 2013 title, went on to be UNESCO City of Literature. Now, DCMS wants all bidders to benefit from the bidding process, and we are committed to working with those who do not win to continue to develop, to develop partnerships, advance culture-led change, and strengthen cultural strategies, as well as to signpost upcoming opportunities and funding. So I absolutely commend Wrexham's commitment to winning the UK City of Culture competition 2025, and I applaud my honourable friends continuing championing of Wrexham. And I wish all the shortlisted bidders good luck in the final stage of the competition.